Get ready for Smoke Night Live with Massa Sensei. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. This is Smoke Night Live. I am your host. You can call me Master Sensei. Jordan. Master Sexy. And our producer, Jordan. There you hey. How are you doing, Jordan? I'm doing good. We got a big studio audience tonight. I don't know if the studio cam... Oh, uh, frozen. Darn it. Studio cam's frozen. But we do have a big, uh, we have Dominic's in the house, Matt's in the house, Quinn's in the house, Scott Braban, Trinity Cigar Company, the greatest mobile lounge west of the Mississippi. There they are. Hey, boys. Say hello. Look at that. They're all having fun, getting ready for uh, Jordan tomorrow. Yeah. Big event, <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> big event tomorrow. Who is that guy? The Great Smoke. The Great Smoke. Abe's and we're going to do our own little personal we're gonna have watch a party. Watch party here, which is going to be fun. Hang out and do that. I know a lot of dojo peeps are doing their own watch parties and such. Um, but no, thanks for everybody uh, joining us tonight. Uh, we try to bring you guys uh, guests that people are interested in. And tonight, I think uh, we found a guest that I know all of you guys are going to love because the cigars are so popular on the dojo verse. But before we bring him on, it's been a crazy week. Uh, Jordan, it started off with a uh, new grandbaby, oh. Shiloh. Everybody, Shiloh. cheers. Let's have a little toast to uh, to baby Shiloh, my fourth grand. Babies are cool. Not fourth grandson, fourth grandbaby. Happens to be a boy, but they're not all boys. But cheers to Shiloh. Mm -hmm. And then, Jordan, midweek, boom, you have a birthday. I had a birthday. I and turned so old. And that was fun. Why, we, look at me. I look weird. <laughs> you're blurry. There we go. There we go. Now you're finally into focus there. But so yeah, it's been a it's been a fun week. Lots of uh, family stuff going on. But that doesn't slow us down, Jordan. No, we just keep on rocking. And by the way, hey, new black belt on the dojo verse this week. Oh really? Uh, Brian Schrader. So now now I think we have like what is it, Quinn? Like ten or eleven? How many? 13. 13 black Guys, there's only 290 <laughs> spots left. You got to get your black no, There's belts. ultimate. There's unlimited black belts, but happens. the first 300 get a coin. The first 300 get the black belt challenge coin. So you got to get on that. Um, if, remember, if you're a black belt, you're basically like boss on the dojo verse. Like You can pretty much tell anybody anything, right, Jordan? You're like... Stud. Oh, yeah, you can just start deleting other people's <laughs> posts that you don't like, that kind of stuff. That's what I do. <laughs> You're not even a black belt. I'm not a black belt. But if, 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 if we gave out were. points for adding cigars, I would be I'd be ghost ninja level. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, if you're not on the dojoverse.com, please get on there tonight. Start earning your belts and badges ASAP because it's a ton of fun. Everybody's doing it. All the cool kids are doing it. Uh, all right, so uh, let's get right into the show. I don't think it's any secret whatsoever how big of a fan I am of this particular brand. I smoke them at least once a week, uh, if not more. I've, oh, I've said a uh, hundred times, Jordan, on the show, I have like five cigars that are sort of like my base cigars that I go to. I got the Espinosa Habano. I've got the HVC Serie A. I've got... The Aladino, right here, the original Aladino. There's a couple others. Oh, um, yeah. But the original Aladino, one of my favorite cigars. And you know what I love so much about this cigar, Jordan? Is what? It never lets me down. It just no. never lets me down. I, I am hooked on this cigar. I remember, to be honest, let's just keep this real. Uh, it was Coop. It was Coop. my buddy, William Cooper, one of, my best, one of my best buddies in the whole industry. And... He was, like, super high on this cigar. Like, he's, he was just, I think he had it as Cigar of the Year. He was like, Eric, you got you to gotta get into this cigar. You'll love it. And he was 100% right. So tonight we're going to talk a lot about the Aladino. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Justo Eroa, welcome to Smoke Night Live, my friend. 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody and uh, have, for having me on. And it's a true pleasure being in there with Jordan and everybody, and uh, especially for the, the new uh, grandkid. Yes. Again. So congratulations. Shiloh, the new, the new grandson. So that's exciting. Uh, Husto, speaking of family, um, we can't start this show without getting into your family. Your family has a rich history in the industry, maybe uh, more so or at least as much as anybody we've ever had on this show. You come from a legendary tobacco family. Talk just a little bit about uh, where, how you're, you know, the history, a, a Reader's Digest version of the history of your family in the tobacco industry. You, your father, your brother. It's an incredible story. Well, I, I would probably say uh, most that everybody's in the most guys, most families that are in the industry have a little bit of, of, of heritage in the industry. But for example, our our our, our great grandfather, my dad's father, was a grower of tobacco for the Cuban land. And most of our tobacco was bought by uh, tobacco brokers in, in in Florida and sold to the big manufacturers. Uh, we were talking, uh, uh, you know. Uh, House of Windsor, you were talking about Perfecto Garcia, you were talking to uh, all, the, all the big manufacturers that were in Tampa. So uh, what happened was during the Cuban embargo, all the tobacco in, in Cuba was prohibited and all these factories in Tampa were rushing out to look for new supplies of tobacco. And then uh, Somoza opened up for many Cuban expats to go there and also Tallahassee, you know, Quincy became a very popular area for a lot of the Cuban expats to go there. My dad was one of the guys that went there, uh, brought by the Oliva family that brought him on board. And then in, in back in 62, uh, my dad, after he went to Korea and Bay of Pigs, was able to go down to Honduras to actually start doing a, uh, the first uh, selection or, 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 or selecting the crop that was a pilot program in our in our current farm that was actually planted in 1961, and you had the two oldest tobacco barns in the whole Central America in our farm. So wow. this is probably the oldest farm in the industry, and today is probably the biggest infrastructure farm of the industry with 52 tobacco barns, over 26 uh, greenhouses, uh, you know, 440 acres of drip irrigation. We're 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 just a a very unique uh, farming operation. So now talk a little bit about, um, I mean, obviously the uh, Camacho uh, brand plays a major role in the Aroa family. Um, how did that come to be um, after, you, you know, you're, you guys ended up in Honduras growing tobacco? Uh, was that the, the brand that you started at that point? And then uh, to walk us through a little bit about, you know, the Camacho story. Well, basically, my, my, my dad has always been a, a tobacco grower. And what happened was, uh, you know, in, in one of the cross paths during the when, when the, the boom was, uh, you know, he was he was he became the largest grower of candela growing over 500,000 pounds of candela in, 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 uh, uh, in that time and in the 80s. But also, uh, he also partnered up the Swisher called them because they had issues running one of the one of the tobacco one of the tobacco uh, farms that they had purchased. And basically my dad uh, went in as a partner. And, you know, once uh, they covered the debt, my dad agreed to buy it. But once they agreed to, when my dad paid off the debt, you know, they didn't continue buying the tobacco. And what happened was he became then a manufacturer. So he started manufacturing private labels uh, like uh, Baccarat and uh, La Fontana, and the opportunity to buy uh, from Simon Camacho that had passed away was able to uh, acquire also Camacho. And since he was no longer supplying tobacco to, to Swisher, uh, he actually became a, a, a tobacco uh, grower. It, it became into manufacturing, taking over those brands. And then all of a sudden, Camacho takes off since we were able to get in the, late, in the, in the 90s the seed from uh, from the Rodriguez family that helped us. Uh, he was the, known for Corojo in, 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 in Cuba. We're able to get that seed. And from there on, Camacho is, 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 a, is a story of success that my brother Christian was able to market real well with, with the help of South Fontana. 
How how were they able to bring that seed uh, from Cuba to Honduras? How what was that well, process like? Uh, well, the seed was actually given to my dad by the Rodriguez family in the nineties. Uh, but when we started, we started growing with the, with the, the original criollo, uh, which we will we call ourselves the Victoria for us because you know because of my grandmother and and and, and Corojo and criollo are very very similar. But it seems that like the Corojo, when we grow in Hammersprung, has a, a particular characteristic that, first of all, is, is very success, uh, susceptible to blue mold. So a lot of people have stayed away from the, from the original strain or variety because not only is it susceptible, but also yields like 40% less. But the amount of aroma and, 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 and spicy and sweetness that it gives you is very characteristic of this of the sleeve. And that's what made Camacho very popular. And we have specialized in doing that. But, but, you know, to specialize in that, one of the things that we needed to do is invest in technology. You know, we went into a, a bigger best practices, uh, agricultural agricultural practices. We also invested in drip irrigation. And we were actually were, the, we, I think, we probably one of the biggest or the biggest uh, farm operation under drip irrigation. Wow. And so now... The, the Camacho brand obviously was uh, extremely popular. Um, and then at some point, you, you guys, the, the brand was sold. Uh, how and why was the, the Camacho brand sold off? Well, I think it was probably, I was, I was not part of that decision, but I think, it, 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 I think the opportunity presented itself. And, uh, and you know, you, you build something, and, and then one of the ideas was to keep on supplying them tobacco. And uh, and then I think my brother stayed on working with them. I don't know too many details, but more or less he stayed on working with them. Then he was able to, with them, uh, allow them to start the CLE brand. You you know he'd rather be you know his own his own entrepreneur than, than than work in corporate, which is a little bit different than having your own you know your own timeline or or time frame or your ownership or your own time. So he ventured his way, and then uh, I guess. <coughs> Uh, Camacho stopped buying our tobacco. David off started on buy, stopped bu- buying our tobacco, and we have the tobacco. So one of the things my dad said, "Hey, this is the opportunity for us to go back into the market after his non-compete stopped." Right, and, and that's expired. So then JRE Tobacco was born, um, and that isn't that long ago. We're talking 2015, uh, right? 2015 ish, right? Yes, and actually 2015, and I basically took over in 2016. So actually, this is our fifth year. Out in out in, out in the in the market, and and we're extremely happy because uh, I think we, you know with with, with we have a, a, a very uh, strong organic growth. People are you know uh, everywhere in the industry are you know we're focusing right now on brick and mortar because these guys are the ones that really help us push the product and let people try the product in in in, in the different in the different uh, uh, lounges. And you know and, and it's a cigar that is always consistent. The price points are. You know, between six and ten dollars. So we're 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 there. We have a little higher pricing also in, in different SKUs like the Reserva, which are limited, which is the uh, a, just the, the 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 higher primings of the Corojo. Uh, and and it's, it's it's been it's been it's been a, it's a lot of fun. It's been now, a lot you, of fun. you personally, Husto, how did you how did they rein you into the to the business? What were you doing before you got involved in the family company, and how did they? How did you decide you wanted to be a part of all of this? Well, I have always been involved in the part of agriculture. So even when my, my father and, and Camacho was going on, I'm the one that always uh, helped run the operation in the farms. I had all the equipment, the tractors. I did the crop rotation with sorghum and corn. And so uh, since I'm, 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 I'm actually, I'm truly a farmer. So if anybody wants to talk to me about something, you know, you talk to me about combines or, you, you know, tractors and stuff like that and we could have a conversation all day <laughs> so so that's 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 really my background and uh at the same time we also had a water water bottling business and right. believe it or not it, it was kind of a it was kind of a uh, uh, things that happen in life you know I, I had also the opportunity to sell the water bottling business and you know i i sold the water bottling business and, and, and I came uh, uh, to U.S. and worked corporate America. And then a Camacho basically in the same year, the year after we sold. And then after six or seven years after the non-compete expired, my dad said, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's time to come home. 
you know, you and I are the farmers. You like the farm. You know, I'm starting this up. And, and for me, it's new because it, it, right. I, I had never been, I've been in sales, you know, selling water. When you start selling water, you say, hey, this is a crazy business. And believe it or not, today is a, it's a very big and important business. Uh, and, and I guess, you know, if you could sell, you know, ice cube to Eskimo, you, you, could, <laughs> you could try to, you could try and, and, and sell cigars. But, you know, cigars is very special because right. you build a lot of, a lot of relationships uh, with, with different uh, store owners and, and, and consumers. Now, this, uh, what you guys are known for is this tobacco. And um, it's very distinctive. I mean, um, there's, a lo- there's very few um, cigars in the industry where you can sort of almost instantly tell like what you're smoking. And this is one of those. The, the Corojo that you guys grow and that you guys put on this uh, as a wrapper, it's just got this salty, peanutty, uh, full, interesting flavor that it almost it's almost always the same. And when I when I grab an Aladino, who's still like I can tell like I can tell what I'm smoking. And I think that's a that's a good thing. It's very distinctive to your farms. Um, t- let's talk a little bit about Corojo tobacco because uh, there's this uh, there's authentic Corojo, there's original Corojo. Uh, talk about this leaf and why it's so special. Well. Uh- Corojo is one, you know, you have different varieties within, 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 it, whether, whether it's oranges or whether it's uh, even cattle, you know, you got, you got, you know, Holsteins, you got Brown Swiss and same thing in varieties of tobacco. You'll have uh, Corojo, you'll have Habano, you'll have Connecticut. And, and what happened is uh, uh, Corojo the eight uh, was probably developed through a cross of the original Corojo and, and, and crossing and pollinization. Of, of, of Habano and, and Corojo, and, and actually it was able to create a, a good a good strain, but it's not as rich as, as the original authentic Corojo. The original authentic Corojo is, is, is a little shorter plant, like I said. Uh, you can only get probably about 1,400 pounds versus 2,200 pounds of uh, Habano or, or, or the 98. So in, in a way, it's more resistant to blue mold, but also it, it loses or dilutes the flavor. The flavor in the Corojo, it's, it's like you said, it's got that peppery, salty, but at the same time, it also has got that nice sweetness. And one of the things that is we're able to do is that when we manufacture is give it the proper aging so that when you're smoking it, you don't get that ammonia taste when you're, your tobacco is it, not cured enough. You know, everybody says fermentation, and there's nothing wrong with ferment, saying fermentation because the industry has used it. But as you well know, if you're a liquor, or a liquor guy or follows liquor, fermentation is a transformation of sugar, uh, sugars into alcohol. And I call it aging or fermentation because you're actually getting the, 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 the tobacco to slowly uh, lose the ammonia that it has. Right. Now, would you say, uh, just in comparison, uh, the Corojo, is, is, it a, is it a difficult leaf? to deal with is it an easier leaf to, is it hardy is it talk about like why it, you know the the structure and is it and it's uh i guess i'm just i'm just trying to figure out like would you say that this is uh similar to uh say habano is it harder is it easier what well it's it's, it's way it's way harder it, it, like i said the, the plan is really more you know, normally when we start planting, you know, we usually start we start planting sometime in, in late October, November, and then uh, when the when the when the crop is out on the field, when you get cold weather, uh, December, January, and February, it is extremely extremely susceptible to blue mold. So you have to change the patterns, you have to change the the you know the distances. Uh, you know, you, you use uh, you try to use more agronomical practice. To allow it to have more spacing between with, between rows and, and and that, so your yield also is lowered. While you grow the habano, you, 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 you know it's much easier. It's like throwing, it's like you know, like, it's like growing corn and not growing tomatoes. It's way easier. Right. It, it's just more labor intensive. Plus, the yield is just completely different. Now, the the payoff is is worth For it now. because. When you, when you have that good Corojo, it's, it is, like I said, sort of unmistakable. Uh, so uh, we're gonna, I'm going to do a quick commercial, but when we come back, I want to talk about the Aladino line, which I find to be really interesting. Like, first, we'll talk about like, how you came up with it, but 
there are some unique aspects of the Aladino line, which is super popular on the Dojaverse. So we'll talk about that. We'll also, um, uh, we, I think we have an uh, Instagram question we'll get to and some other stuff. So hang with us. But, guys, this show is sponsored by JR Cigars, one of the world's largest online cigar stores. Granted, this isn't as good as Randy's Reed. But I'll, I'll do my best. Well, nobody can, nobody can rival that. Nobody can rival Randy. But anyways, JR's inventory ranges from everyday bundled cigars to incredibly high-end boxes, plus a large selection of cigar accessories. This year, JR Cigars is celebrating their 50th anniversary. They will be celebrating all year long with amazing promotions, contests, sweepstakes, and several limited-run projects with some of your favorite manufacturers. Join JR in celebrating 50 years of excellence and stock up on your favorite cigars today. This is episode 280 of Smoke Night Live. We are chatting with Huso Arroyo from, from uh, uh, JRE Tobacco, talking about the Aladino. Welcome back to the show, Husto. Uh, let's talk about this line. Uh, you, you, so right off the bat, you guys came out with a few lines, um, but the Aladino is really the one that caught hold and the thing that I really like about this Husto that you guys did was once you recognized that this cigar had some popularity, you really built out the line uh, in a neat way. You had the Reserva, um, there was the Maduro, then you came out with the Connecticut, uh, recently the Cameroon, and then the Habano. Uh, Habano. Um, so like, it seems like once you guys noticed that this was catching on and it was popular... Instead of going a million different directions, and you could have named the Cameroon something else. It, it didn't necessarily have to be the Aladino. But you stuck with that, and you built this line out. Now there's this nice range of product within the Aladino line, which is something that I really appreciate. You didn't just jump away from it too quickly and go off to a, you know several other lines. Aladino, uh, the name, where did it come from? And let's talk a little Let's dive into the Aladino a bit here. Okay, uh, for the Aladino, even though, uh, you know, it's, it's, it was the old movie theater that goes there, and the way I spin it off is, uh, if you look at, at the logo, it will have 1947 or 1961. That's kind of like the golden era of, of, of the, Cuban, the Cuban cigar industry. That's before the embargo. So, uh, so that's when Cuban cigars became world famous, and it, le- and, and it lived basically the peak of his, of, of his fame. And uh, an Aladino is actually Aladdin. So when you're smoking an Aladino, it's going to bring you back to that era, the golden era of Cuban cigars. Yeah, and, and the, the, the branding say, of it, the look, just the look of it, uh, just to, to, to pause real quick with what you're saying. Very old school. It's, it's very old school and I think it classic. looks like a, a 1970s diner. The, yes. The color scheme you would find in a 70s yeah. diner. And, I love and it. Guess what? And if you were to guess what color my dad likes, it's yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he likes is yellow. Yeah, my so, uh, it's my dad's favorite color, so I get that. Yeah. Um, but it's a very just you see it on the shelf, like you walk into a um, a brick and mortar, and and you guys have a, a sort of a cool marketing scheme where you have a um, there's like a box that has like all the different the sizes. Vista. Yeah, yeah, and, oh yeah, that, that that display box with the seven or, seven original Cuban sizes that right. were made then. The Toro was not a Cuban size, uh, you know. So the, you know, the, we had a Churchill, which is normally a forty-eight by seven, but now you see Churchills, which are fifty-four by seven, which is not a Cuban size, but it's called a Churchill because of the length. So you know, we have adjusted to the to the to the, to the contemporary market. Right. And, yeah. And yeah, but, so, um, so talking about that, like I was saying at the, when I started this question was. It seems like some cigar companies who so, and I'm not saying this is wrong or right. Um, I just personally like the strategy that you guys took in that uh, you could have made the the Connecticut, um, the JRE Connecticut, or you could have come up with other lines, but you stuck within the Aladino sort of family and started building it out. Well, you know, it's one of the things that is very hard is, is, is to build a brand. And, and I come from the beverage business, and I completely understand, uh, you know, mass mass market consumption. I mean, when I when I was in the water business, my competitor were Pepsi and Coke, Dasani and, and Aquafina, and Aquafina. So so I, I understand how to compete with those guys. And one of the things I, I told my dad first, you know, even though he had a lot of SKUs that he used, our, our regular Corojo lines got like twelve SKUs, but you know, the core line is actually six of that six six. 
six of us, which is 50 percent, is really is where we move all of our product. And uh, and I said one of the first things that I want to do, I want to first start with the Corojo, and let's not do anything else because we're new in the market. There is very limited space in, in the humidors, and we need to at least have three or four facings of our Corojo. And uh, and then uh, the following year, which I probably made a mistake now looking at retroactively, but it, when I you know I, I did it anyways, I came out with the Maduro, and and the Maduro is catching on and doing real well. And then my the, the following year I did the Connecticut and Connecticut really actually took off like crazy, and uh, uh, and that's why I said I should have you know went backwards but you know you can't you know <laughs> the decision was made but you know, our Connecticut right now is is probably our, our, our best selling line of all like it was in the days of uh, like wow. it was in the days of Camacho. Really, uh, I Lafayette. didn't I didn't know that the your Connecticut was I I mean. I I would assume that this just the original Aladino would have been your, your well, number one skew. You guys took a, kind of an interesting approach with that Connecticut. It's it's more like a, an it is your grandfather's Connecticut, right? Like it it, it does have like an old school Connecticut profile to it. Well, one of the things with that Connecticut is very you know I, when I'm traveling on the road, I'll smoke a lot of that Connecticut myself. I'm a mild to medium smoker, uh, but you know the way we have built our cigar, especially the regular Corojo. You know, it's a medium, medium, maybe, uh, let's say from a scale from one to 10, it's a 5.1 or something like that. Because it's a cigar that is a mild to medium smoker can smoke it. But if you like fuller cigars, it's got so much taste and so much aroma, it will also satisfy your palate because it's got intensity in, in flavor. And then our Connecticut, I would say, is probably like two notches below that. But it's also got, it's, it's got, a, it's got a Corojo binder that allows you to taste some of that flavor and also is combined with some, some Habano and other, and other tobaccos that I have in there that gives it a creaminess with a little bit of peppery-ish. And, and so it's, it's, very, it's very good. And it's actually it's been, it's been phenomenal. Now the uh, let's talk just real quickly about the Corojo Reserva. Uh, how do you how does that differentiate itself just from the original Corojo that you do? Well, basically, uh, when you're looking at uh, at the regular Corojo, we're talking middle and lower pliant primings, and then the Corojo Reserva is actually the higher primings. Uh, in, in, in the other in the past life, it used to be another you, you graduated into that one. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's so so that's that's that that's that, that's how it is, and. You know, we, we keep uh, we keep that uh, in, in two sizes, actually three sizes. Uh, during the whole year, you could buy uh, the Robusto and the Toro. And then once a year, I come out with the Coronas because what I do during the whole year, all the smaller leaves, which are higher primings that I cannot use for a Robusto or a Toro, I save and I do, I do a Corona release in November. So usually each year, I come out with around 800 or 900 boxes and everything is pre-ordered for all the reserver accounts. And that in the reserva is also an allocated product. It's not on the price list. All right. Now, uh, the last two that uh, in the Aladino line that we really haven't discussed yet, and this one's super interesting, This the uh, the Cameroon. So this isn't your typical uh, Cameroon wrapper, right? This is... Uh, oh, got an alligator in the background. Somebody's driving by. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's right. Um, so this this Cameroon is uh, grown in Honduras. Is that yes, right? Yes, it's a, yes. It's actually uh, one of the biggest tobacco leaf brokers in the country. Like four or five years ago, and we started doing a, a little bit of experimentation, and uh, we actually, you know, I think we we, we did it really well, and, uh, and now we're we, we want to become like we like we have done. In the Corojo, we kind of want to specialize and, and be known also for Cameroon, and we're extremely happy. I've spoken to a couple guys that said, hey, you know, this is really, really Cameroon because, you know, I don't like Cameroon, and when I smoked it, it's, it's, it tastes just like Cameroon. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, and, and, and it's, this is a, a blend that is right between the regular Aladino, regular line Corojo, and, and right between the Aladino Connecticut. So it's like right in, in between both, but it's got that natural sweetness. And also with Corojo fillers, it also gives you that spiciness and sweetness, which is very, I'm, I'm extremely happy, and I love smoking this cigar a lot. Is it a challenge uh, doing Cameroon um, compared to the other tobaccos? Is that a, a difficult tobacco to deal with? 
You know, it, it has, it has, you have to learn how to manage it. And we've been doing it for the last four or five years, you know, started with two, three little, two acres and then four acres and five acres. Now we're a little bit over that. Uh, uh, but you know, it, it, it you know, it, it requires, it requires to do everything in perfect timing, you know, and, and, and we, and I think we're, we consider ourselves professional growers and that's what we want to really be known for in the industry. And now finally, the Jordan, our uh, value price cigar of the year. Jordan, you you were the one that just smoked well, uh, this just and loved it. absolutely oh, there you loved go. it. That's right there. Right there, the yep. Habano uh, Vintage Selection. Uh, talk about that cigar a little bit. The price point on that is incredible. Well, I, I think um, when my dad started back in 2015, started rolling cigars, uh, you know, he says, oh, my favorite size is, is the Watch Out. So he filled a whole bunch of them. Uh, you know, a couple, maybe over, a little bit over two hundred thousand, and uh, and they've been sitting there for a while, and uh, and it was, uh, it's a perfect cigar. And I said, you know what, I'm going to do something. And, and basically, uh, we added on uh, a, a Habano wrapper on this, and uh, and and it's just become it's become it's it's, it's a flavor, it's, it's it's just a flavorful cigar, and and. We wanted to give 50 box counts uh, way back then, and, and, and one of the things I'm trying to do is keep uh, is keep our, our grandfather count and the grandfather uh, stuff that they did we did in the Camacho days. Uh, so you know it's a 50 box count, and one of the great things about it, it's been very successful. You know, I'm giving everybody a cigar that they could smoke at a very great price and also a fantastic cigar. It will be coming out uh, for TPE with a Lancero and a Toro. So that the line is expanding, and sometime in, in, in during the summer, for PCA we should have a Gordo. Now that, the, that's the, exactly what I was just about to ask you, Husto is is what's next for Aladino. So you're saying uh, new sizes in the Habano. Um, what about other other wrappers? Are there? Have you considered? Uh, will, will there be like a, a Sumatra Aladino? Will there be other? versions of the Aladino or, or are... I think, I think we got a couple of things there go, going on. Uh, we, you know, like we're, I, I, and like I said, one of the things I can't come out with everything in one year because sure. you saturate the market and we also need to prepare the tobacco. So whatever I grow, let's say this year, 2021, I want you, you'll be seeing it in the market in 2023. Right. So, uh, and one of the things we don't do, we don't rush anything and slowly the brand is building, but the, Trying to give you with the Aladino portfolio, so if you have a Connecticut smoker, you you, you you have somebody there. If you have somebody that likes a little bit of Camarillo, you you'll have it there. If you like somebody that's smoking a Maduro, you have the Aladino uh, Maduro line, which is there. And if you like something a little bit bold, you have the Reserva. So we're trying to give you know within the same brand the ability for to have alternatives in, 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 in cigars. Especially all the different, all the cigars are completely uh, different uh, flavor profiles. So we're not just putting on a band and, and you know just getting a lighter color cigar and, 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 and saying it's a different blend. Actually, they they do taste completely different. So to get back to the the Habano real quick, you're coming out with a few new sizes. Is every uh, as I understood it, the Rothschild was aged five years before it came out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So with with the additional sizes, is that going to continue? They're all going to always be well. They'll they'll, they, they'll have at least at least a year, year and a half. Because okay. I already have them made. One of the things that we're doing, we're, we're we're manufacturing ahead of time, so I have a lot of inventory. I just rather have cigars and then just get just just get the boxes and bands, and that also allows us to give us uh, an aging period, uh, and and also uh, a drying period for the cigar. So that way you have consistency in, 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 the, in the quality of the product. Right. All right. Well, we'll look forward to those uh, new Vitolas in that because uh, that's a. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get yeah. a package for you as yeah. soon as uh, afterwards. So you could try them out and you, you enjoy them. Now, if the folks that are watching haven't tried that one yet, that, that's one that I seriously recommend you guys give a shot to. A, it's extremely affordable, and the, the, uh, the performance that you get out of it is – Amazing, and that's why we gave it the uh, value price cigar of the year this year because it's really fantastic. All right, Huso, uh, real quick, talking about the factory, um, you know, with the whole COVID year and everything that happened, uh, and everybody trying to adjust, trying to sort of make do. It seems like you guys um, were were maybe in a good position, at least as far as the factory goes, because 
what most people uh, know if they've been to where to the factory to your guys's farms and factories is you guys already had this whole system in place of being extremely uh, cleanly. Uh, everything was very it's very well kept. There's uh, processes in place to keep um, you know. Uh, you know, bad uh, actors out, uh, if you will, molds and germs and that kind of stuff. Did that help you guys in adjusting to this whole COVID year? The fact that you guys were sort of already doing probably most of the stuff that people had to, to try to, you know, figure out at the last second in 2020, you guys were sort of already doing all of that stuff. Well, actually that was uh, one of the big advantages that we had. As a matter of fact, we helped a lot of the guys in the industry. We even sent information to Nicaragua to help a lot of the manufacturers over there. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's something that we've been proud of. We've been doing this. We have doctors on staff. We have nurses on staff. You know, we, you know, uh, our teams are split, are split, are split up. We separated the teams. Uh, so, you know, we're doing everything the right way, keeping safety first. You know, you have easily, you know, a couple of times during the day, you'll have a, a nurse go by and take, take temperatures. They have a log on the temperature of all the employees, you know, we check them. So it's, it, it's, it's something that we have for us. It's just, it's, you know, we already had the staff on going. Uh, so the only thing we're doing is just checking them while they're working. And, uh, you know, we have been very successful in doing that. And, and, you know, we're very proud that, you know, if you do things right from the beginning, it's, it, it's easier just to, 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 to do things. And that's right. one of the things we, we try to do. How often are you uh, in Honduras at the, uh, at the farm and the factory? Do you spend a lot of time down there? Actually, uh, I was just there last uh, last month, uh, and I was there with my dad, and uh, he came up here for a checkup to the VA, and then after that, uh, 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 him and I flew back, and I was there for about a week looking at all the projects that we're doing, and uh, my idea is probably to go in the next 10, 15 days back, so the idea is to go every month or every other month. Uh, it just the travel restrictions is just getting a little bit more complicated, you know, so it's just it's just trying to figure out when is the right time. Uh, and, and, and meet all the requirements of, of, of the testing right. going in and coming out. How, how, how is Honduras doing, at least in the areas, you know, Tegucigalpa to, to and Don Lee? How, how, are they, how are they handling? Is it, is it, what's the situation like as far as travel goes right now for those, for those areas? Well, you know, there is a lot of uh, uh, restrictions in, in, in most of the country. Uh, you know, you have uh, curfews. Uh, you have uh, limitations and in, in, in the stuff that they're doing in restaurants. So it's very similar to us, uh, you know, in the amount of limitations that they do. But all essentials, you know, like airport, transportation, you know, fuel, supermarkets and everything is being supplied. Uh, so, you know, unemployment is, is, is a little bit tough, but we're, we're, we're seeing the same thing here at home. So it's, right. it's you know, it's, it's basically kind of the, the same way, but it's it's it, in a way it's, with, with more hardship because there's limited resources that the countries do have. Right. Uh, what would you say the percentage is as far as the tobacco that you guys produce? You know, what goes into your own brands, your own lines? Uh, what what percentage is, is sold off to other companies? H- how does that work? You guys produce a lot of tobacco. Well, I would say uh, most, you know, we do buy a couple wrappers. We buy the San Andres. So we've been buying since, the, you know, the Camacho days from the, from the Torrent family. And we also buy from uh, our Ecuadorian Connecticut because uh, they, you know, they do it better than we do. And, you know, you can give credit where there's due and I'm not going to complicate myself. So uh, so we buy those two wrappers, but everything else we're doing ourselves. And we do sell some uh, important amounts of tobacco out, but I would say like 99, 97, 98% of our tobacco is ours. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, especially yeah. for the opera. You guys are completely vertically integrated which a lot of companies don't can't say they can't say that they're vertically integrated you know what's the big advantage of of obviously being vertically integrated you guys you know do the you control the tobacco you control how the cigars are made you control the production you control the distribution you guys run it all what are some of the what what aspects of being vertically integrated are sort of the most challenging some people say like you know I'll talk to some guys on the show and they'll say like oh man like just getting the boxes made is is the hardest part of the entire process. Or some guys might say, "Oh, it's the marketing. It's the marketing is the hardest part." What would you say is the most challenging aspect well, of? I, I look at it in a different way because you know everything has to do with supply chain. If you're going to do a blend, you need to know how much tobacco you have, 
type A, type B, and type C, and how many cigars you can produce. And then after you figure that out, then you have to figure out what I want to be growing the next couple of years because I want to keep that same quality. So there is a lot of thinking behind what you're going to be doing, especially if you want to program and have an expansion of, of lines. So, for example, we, we're working on, because I think Cameroon is going to be, explode, is going to be one of our biggest lines. So, you know, we're going more Cameroon. Uh, and I think our Habano is, is also going to do extremely well. So we're also growing more Habano. So we're everything you have to plan ahead sure. because you need to work with a lot of projections. Everything is about a supply line. So there is, and definitely cigar boxes is the biggest uh, uh, bottleneck, I would say, most manufacturers have today. I wish we could all go to carton boxes and stop wasting, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's something that is hard. I don't know if, if, if you know, it's, if, it would be great if we just, just have shelves and just ship, bun, ship bundles because I think it would be a, a great benefit for, for you know, for, for the industry. Just throwing away boxes is crazy. And, it's, you know, boxes now can range from five to seven bucks. Right. All right, so you've been doing this a while, Justo, and people always want to know, like, uh, this is the most popular question that we get on the show, and it, it's interesting. Uh, how, how much uh, do you get to smoke other companies' products, and are there uh, a cigar or two or a company or two that you, that you enjoy besides the stuff that comes out of GRE? Is there, is there any ones that you, that you can mention that you that you particularly say, hey, I really like what these guys are doing. They really are, 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 are hitting it right. You know, there's, there's a lot of companies. I would say today for cigar smokers, there's tons of great manufacturers out there. The tobacco that is out there in the industry is, is wonderful. You, get, you got great companies all over. And, uh, but I'll be honest with you, you know, having you being Master Sensei, you know, a Japanese guy that makes beer will never drink a competitor's beer. You know, they'll, they'll get the samurai sword right through them. But, you know, I do have smoked some other guys because, you know, people give, me, give them to me, especially when I meet other cigar manufacturers. They'll give me a cigar and I'll get their feedback. And, uh, and you know, even in the show I was speaking with Dom Pepin, he gave me one of his cigars, he smoked one of mine. And, you know, it's like I said, there is a great camaraderie between cigar manufacturers there's a lot of great respect in the industry for a lot of people and you know they're all making fantastic cigars yeah and, it does know, I, it does sort of seem like who's so just to just real quick build on what you're saying like i know this might not be the cigar boom of the 90s obviously we're not in that but in a way it's a kind of a different boom it seems to me the boom is in the quality of the product boom. the craft part of it like paying you know ultimate attention to it, maybe it's because the uh, consumer is is more savvy now, and they 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 know what to expect from good cigars. Would you say like the that the product these days seems to be you know at a really high level, almost from you know from most companies? Well, you know, like I said, I mean, uh, the, the the more we get into into understanding the quality and, and, and growing techniques, and you know, uh, soil samples and and fertilization. And the way you do that, you'll get better product out, you know, so it's, 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 it's a lot of has to do if you get good quality tobacco, most likely you'll end up with, you know, if you get good, good, uh, good beef, you'll get a good steak. It's kind of like the same thing. You get good tobacco, you're going to get a good cigar. So, uh, so there is a, a lot of pride now. And as you can see that, you know, the family companies are, are always very, very thoughtful on trying to do their best. So every time they come out with something, you know, there's a family pride that goes into it. So everybody tries to do the best, you know, with, 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 with the tools that they have. Right. All right. So who's so on your, on your days off, you know, you, you, you gotta be into some things other than, than tobacco, right? You need, you need an escape. Uh, how does, how does Husto escape from the cigar industry? Do you, do you binge watch, uh, shows? Do you watch sports? You know, what does Husto do on his day off? Well, I, I like to watch a lot of series. Uh, you know, I like to uh, uh, watch a lot of action series. Uh, I, you know, believe it or not, I'm a, I'm a Trekkie. I also uh-huh. like Game of Thrones. Okay. I like Game of Thrones. What did uh, you think of that uh, uh, finale? Game of Thrones uh, finale. You know what? It, it, they had to do something like that because they're gonna they're gonna you know sell us on another sequel. But it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of they was kind of they they kind of cut it off there. They just wanted to end the chapter without you know really. It was kind of ah uh, you know yeah. All right, so who is the best starship captain of the entire 
Star Trek uh, arc from beginning to end? Was it Captain Kirk? I, I, I definitely it's got to be Kirk. He, oh, he yeah. was, you know, he was the playboy. He was, the, he was a badass. <laughs> you, can't, you can't change those guys. Patrick Stewart, maybe a close second. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think he's good. But I also watched Enterprise. I also watched, uh, what was it, uh, you know, the station, the, the uh, or was it uh, the big space station? I don't recall the, the name of that series. Uh, Deep Space Nine. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, you know, I watched them all. So, so they're you're, all, they're you're all kind of like, good. you're sort of a sci fi guy, maybe, right? You like the sci fi. Yeah, I'm pretty much of a sci fi, yeah. Star Wars series. Yeah. 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 It, it, what's so like, uh, right now, there's, uh, isn't there like a, a Star Trek series now that's going on? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think there is, but I'm not gonna pay. Fi- I'm not gonna pay five bucks a month. Now. <laughs> everybody, 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 you, I just wait till they put it on. You cheap <laughs> bastard! <laughs> Come on. <Yeah. laughs> uh, 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 sports? You you do you, you follow any? Uh, yeah, Tampa Bay Bucks. I mean, I, I grew up go. in Tampa. I played for Tampa Jesuit. Uh, oh wow! I mean, what was your the, what position did you play? Believe it or not, outside linebacker. All okay. right, I can see that. You got some kind of yeah. girth to you. So that was a bit, actually, uh, Husto, I was in Tampa when they won the, a, uh, the NFC championship game. I was at the Cigars International store there in Tampa. Place got super nervous there about 10 minutes prior, you know, before the game ended because, like, you know, it didn't look good for a while. But then it, when they came back, the place just erupted. It was, it was electric. Well, Tampa Bay is probably one of the best uh, fan bases in the NFL. I mean, uh, I mean, we, we have created the best quarterbacks, pro, you know, uh, Super Bowl quarterbacks from Steve Young, uh, Doug Williams, Trent Dilfer. We had one more. So we had four quarterbacks that we traded away. They all won Super Bowls. And now we're getting all our Super Bowls. There you go. I still think I still think uh, Tony Dungy built the, the, the team to win the Super Bowl. And then uh, the the coach now, I think, is in uh, L.A. just – just uh, cherry pick that Super Bowl. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we got a, a audience question. Uh, Russell says, "What do you think about the Mars landing?" Yeah, we just put a uh, a, oh, new, a new rover is, on there. That is that is actually pretty cool. I think uh, that's something that is going to you know we need we need a little bit of diverse uh, you know a lot of uh, we we need a little bit of uh, uh, how do you call it distraction L- distraction with which because we're getting so many bad news and. Things are, you know, just happening a lot. And the other thing, believe it or not, I'm also I play a lot of Call of Duty. I'm a, I'm a oh, Call of Duty guy. Wow. Oh, yeah, and I love and I love guns. I have tons. Well, I don't have a tons, but in Honduras, I had tons of guns. <laughs> now wait, now that brings up an interesting question. Isn't it extremely hard to own a gun in Honduras? Right. Well, it, it was. They put a lot of restrictions, but when I was there, uh, I even I even had a dragon off, which. Mm. I regret selling it. I didn't know. I didn't know it was here. Well, the Aroas pretty much just own Honduras, so you guys, you guys, <laughs> nah, you guys nah, nah, do nah, what nah, you want to nah. do. To <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> what, no, no. what about? I mean, you guys are you know the growers basically in Honduras. Have you uh, have you ever thought about expanding that out into Nicaragua, or something like that? Well, you know, Nicaragua has done a, a fantastic job in in. in uh, in, 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 in growing, it, it actually share basically the same valley. It's just a, a, a little bit of a hill from our from our farm and from our house. You can basically see uh, Nicaragua across. So the, you know the valleys are very similar. And uh, and, and 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 no no, but we've been, we've been eradicated in Honduras, and we've been we've been very happy to do that. And I think uh, before we used to have most of the farms that are now growing tobacco in Honduras. The one in Talanga, I think that now, uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, uh, oh, how do you call it? the owners of uh, Cigars International? Oh yeah. yeah uh, Are you talking about um, Scandinavian? Scandinavian has tobacco? that farm that my dad had, and uh, back in the eighties, where we grew, where we grew that. Then there's another farm that we had that we sold off, and I think now the Placencias are using. You know, we were probably growing 12, 1,200, 1,500 acres back in the day, you know, when Camacho was at full stride doing 70,000, 80,000 cigars a day. But, you know, today, you know, th- those those operations, like Hoxha, I think, does over 110,000 cigars a day. So those are uh, manufacturing operations that require tons of tobacco, and it's, it's a huge headache. 
What's your What's your favorite part of your job? Like what What like gets you pumped up in the morning? If you know, like, is it is it is it is it uh, traveling? Is it the farming aspect? Is it the marketing aspect? What like what like gets Husto pumped to uh, drink his coffee and get going in the morning? What do you like the most? Well, I like to talk to a lot of the the cigar shop owners for the simple reason is they're they're a business. Not only are they business partners, but they're running a business that you know if any support that I can provide them allows them to be successful. And, 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 you know, and, and be able to do well, that's something that I really look forward to. I mean, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real close symbiosis that, you know, if they do well, we do well. And also the consumers are doing well because, you know, if people, if, you know, we're all cigars, believe it or not, is really tied to the, to, to the economy of the U.S. So as, as, as long as our economy starts recovering, we do well. Even though we're having kind of like a miniature boom and people are going to be smoking more because we're locked in, spending more time with friends, drinking more and, you know, spending less money out on the restaurants because, you know, unfortunately they're not able to open. But it's going to it's going to it's going to create this is going to be a little bit better uh, for, for the cigar industry because we'll have more cigar smokers. But engaging, you know, the everyday person and, and understanding how people are doing it, it, for me is very important. I'm, I'm, I'm a person that always is wishing everybody well. Now, uh, on that topic, um, if you go into, say, a, a cigar shop or you're dealing with a cigar smoker that's not familiar with Jerry Tobacco or Aladino, the product itself, you know, what's sort of your sales pitch? What do you tell them? How do you explain to them the product and what, what this product represents and what's good about it and why they should carry it? Well, one of the things I, I try to do... Uh, are very subjective you know it's, it's, it's up to you know the favorite cigar is the one they like it's not necessarily the one that you have so it, it's very important to understand from them you know what do they like if they like spicy food if they like strong cigars if they like mild cigars and, and then you engage them in, in, in what they like to do and try to engage in more personal sometimes not talk about business just talk about something else and I, I could probably sit in a store and, you know, and be there, you know, 45, 50 minutes, and then I'll do my business in the last two or three minutes. Because, mm. you know, it's, I, I, I just, I'm not a pushy guy. I, I'm the contrary. And sometimes they try to buy a lot and they in 20, 30 boxes. I kind of hold back. I'm not, you know, I don't want them. I want the product to go in, rotate, and rebuy. Pro- product go in, rotate, and buy. You know, I'm not a guy that wants to use your, your store or somebody's. Uh, place as a warehouse right like so like a lot of people say who's to like it's easy to get somebody to buy one order it's much harder to get them you know to to continue to order to reorder and that's where the quality of the product you know comes into play absolutely and then one of the most important things is you also your biggest ally is going to be the guy that's helping you out in the humidor you know because no matter who goes into the humidor even if, you know, if, if the guy in the shop says, hey, you need to try this. I think this is something you might like or, uh, you know, or something that, you know, you smoke a brand A, B and C. I think this could be a good addition to A, B and C. So that could be in your rotation. So if my product is in the rotation, it, it, it's something that is going to be great because they'll be able to try our cigar. You know, you know, they're not going to get an aftertaste. They'll get, you know, great flavor profiles. It's going to be smooth, great construction, good draw. And they say, hey, you know what, let me give it another try. And then, you know, people get hooked on it once, you know, they try it a couple times. Well, I got to tell you, Husto, I, this is in my rotation. and I, Of course. I don't know. I honestly don't know, Jordan, in the last maybe three years if I've smoked anything more <laughs> than this particular cigar. Like, it's one of my all-time favorites. Well, I and, and can't recommend it There's highly. about every single size you can possibly think of, the Aladino comes in that size. Right, so you're, cov- you're covered. <laughs> whatever your whatever your preference is, you get the Aladino in that size. Right. Now, one thing I was going to ask is, um, the the core of your portfolio obviously is built around this Corojo tobacco, and your brother is using a lot of the same tobaccos and same factories. How do you see yourself differentiating yourself from from his portfolio? Well. Uh- Believe it or not, I, you know, my brother has a separate factory and he does his blending. So he uses a lot of the base of, of the Corojo 
And uh, but you know, factories are completely different. He blends a little bit stronger than we do. Mm-hmm. We tend to blend a little bit more in the medium, more flavorful, and less kick. And, and, and that's how we differentiate himself. He also buys Pelo de Oro. He buys tobacco from Nicaragua, buys tobacco from Dominican Republic. And we try to stick to ourselves just to our own tobacco. So we're probably more of a 100% or 90, like I said, 90 plus percent of our own tobacco. And he'll buy tobacco from other herbs. But his volumes are way bigger than ours, too. He's, very, he's been very successful. Now, if you two guys got into like a brother fight, like an actual fist fight, who who would win? Would it would it be you or Christian? I'm a wrestler. <laughs> Come on. Just leave it there. I'm not say. Oh, shots fired, Christian. Yeah. No, not at all. I, 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 would, I, I hug him and I kiss him all the time. You know, our our real close. We're gonna have to have know, him on there next guy. week. Yeah, I, I gotta yeah. get I gotta get Christian on now and ask him that yeah. same question. See what he see how he responds. Oh, he's. He said he's also a wrestler, too. Yeah. Now, I, I can't thank you enough, uh, Huso, for joining us on a Friday night on Smoke Night Live. I, I'm a, I'm a fanboy. I, I, I make no uh, bones about it. I don't hide it. I love the product that you guys make. I can't wait for uh, what's to come with Aladino, man. Well, hopefully, uh, if, as soon as I get to travel, I'll, I'll be hitting, hitting Colorado soon. I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful place. Uh, I've only been there, I think, once. And, uh, I, you know, we tried to hook up last time, but it was, you know, I was traveling with Michael and, you know, Michael had a different agenda. So it was it was kind of it was kind of tough. But uh, hopefully in the near future, I get to meet you guys up there and hopefully we'll have, you know, the, the you know, the smoker friendly thing going on. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it this year or maybe next year, but uh, I think that's a, it's, a, it's a great cigar country. And I would love to meet up with you guys very soon. That'd be great. We'd have you in studio for a in studio show. That'd be fun. Oh, that will be fantastic. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Huso Roy, everybody. The, uh, cheers uh, to a fantastic show. Cheers. Hey, guys, uh, real quick, Flavor Odyssey Wednesday is a wild card episode. Abe DeBabna from Smoke In will be on on Wednesday night with Robbie and Randy. We will be pairing the Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Maduro with root beer. That was Abe's pick. Wow. Abe wanted to do root beer, so we'll be doing root beer with the uh, the Perdomo, the new Perdomo uh, Maduro. And then guess here's the cool part, Jordan. This is topical. Mm. The very next week on Flavor Odyssey, the next Wednesday, it'll be the Aladino Connecticut. Oh, with Sauvignon Blanc wine. It's the uh, juicy segment. We get into the fruity segment of oh, sorry, fruity. Flavor yeah. Odyssey. That'll be the next segment we do. Is fruity, so that'll be a ton of fun. Uh, Who still will be will be smoking your Aladino Connecticut on that show with some wine? What do you think about that? Oh, that would be fantastic! I think you guys really enjoy the Connecticut. Trust me. As a matter of fact, when we were first launching it, I had probably like 10, 15 retailers down there, and the only thing they smoked was the Connecticut. I said, guys, I got the Reserva, I got the Maduro, <laughs> I got the Coro, but everybody went for the Connecticut. So you'll 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 hopefully you'll enjoy it like you know these guys enjoyed it. Well, I personally ordered a bunch today myself in preparation for that show, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, remember, now next week on Smoke Night Live, uh, I got some things in the works. I don't have, the, I can't say who it is yet because it's not locked in yet. But we have the next few weeks kind of locked up. Uh, it's Friday night, so get on the Dojo Verse, check into some Aladino cigars, uh, share what you're smoking, share what you're drinking, do some now playing. We'll have fun all night long. We've got a full studio of guys. It's going to be a party <laughs> all night long till deep Let's into check in the on night. Those guys. Look, there they go. I don't yeah, know where Dominic went, there. but we're going to be having some fun all night on the Dojo Verse. Until next week, remember never, never smoke, smoke alone. alone. We'll see you guys next week. I mean, is it fast? Oh, it's fast. What about the options? What about the options? It's got all the options. But, like, what about price? It's got to be expensive. Not expensive at all, man. JR's got the greatest deals on cigars and accessories. Check it out. Oh, wow. Look at these. Oh, look at that deal. It's a good price. What are you guys doing with my car? Your car? I thought this was your car. I thought it was your car. Why would it be my car? I don't know. It's not again. We'll get out, but I'm taking this with a JR on the go. No matter whose car you're in, JR Cigar is there for you.